Scott Spears with you on another edition of Scott Spears Now. Very interesting edition today, joined by one of my pals, a great lady, a treasure here in Marion, the 40th treasurer, a matter of fact, of the United States of America, Mary Ellen Withrow. Mary Ellen, how are you? I'm just fine, Scott. Always good <laughs> to be with you. That's right. You know, today we have, uh, when we're taping this, we're one day removed from Mitt Romney, Mm -hmm. Announcing his vice presidential candidate, right, or his companion, right. Lots uh, of excitement. It is. It really yeah, is. Paul right. Paul Ryan, uh, longtime Wisconsin congressman. Uh, what do you make? Have you heard much about Paul Ryan? Well, I've heard his budget plan. You know, I I listened to all of that a lot earlier, and uh, I think it's going to be very interesting. What he uh, he's very uh, seemed to be very upbeat yesterday and also Romney was a little more upbeat I thought um, it'll be very interesting to see how all of this uh, shakes down because it will it's interesting to me uh, because we had a, a horse in this race here in Ohio so to speak uh, yes I think people Rob thought Portman, Portman. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, why do you think he didn't get the nod Portman you know um, it's very strange because I don't think there's any way that Romney's going to win Wisconsin because he picked Paul Ryan. Uh, and I think, uh, I'm not so sure he would have won Ohio if he'd picked Rob Portman either. But that's usually the reason you're going after somebody is is uh, is that reason. So there was another reason. And what was that reason? Was it his... Uh, was that they were going to really go after <coughs> the debt? Uh, was that their big objective? Um, and it may be. I don't know. We'll have to wait and find out. I think it's very interesting, and I think a lot of pundits have said what you just said, that it's not necessarily a slam dunk that he's going to win Wisconsin just because he chose right. one of their congressmen. Why do you think that is? I mean, for a long time, that was pretty well a safe bet, that if you pick somebody from that state, you were going to win that state. Not so much anymore. Well, I think um, this campaign has gone, it's gone on for so long that I think uh, there's very few undecideds at this point. At least that's what they say. I mean, I don't know, but I'm going by what they say. I hope they're telling the truth. And, uh, you know, when there's a lot of undecideds, then you've got a chance to pick up people. But when there aren't undecideds, I mean, unless people change their mind, which is usually not the case, um, uh, that's been my experience anyway. Do you think Ryan changed anybody's mind yesterday? No. No. I, I really don't. But, um, of course, I, I, you know, I, I haven't talked to anybody that said the, that he changed their mind, so I don't know. Had this discussion last night with somebody. Um, do people vote the bottom of the ticket for president? What do you mean, the bottom of the ticket? Uh, vice president. Do they vote oh, for vice president? Well, everybody says it doesn't make much difference, but I think it did last time. I think it made a lot of difference. And it may make a lot of difference this time because of what Paul Ryan stands for as far as his budget plan. Um, that, uh, I mean, that's going to affect, well, I mean, it's going to affect Florida tremendously, and they're after Florida like you wouldn't believe. So why? I don't know. It's, it'll be interesting. It's very interesting to me, and, and uh, I've brought this up several times. Uh, why do you think Wisconsin has become a swing state? From what I have read and seen, it usually tends to go Democratic. They yes. almost always put it in the Democratic slot. Right. Ohio's gone both ways. Florida goes both ways, but Wisconsin mm -hmm. has usually been a Democratic stronghold. Why this time is it up for grabs? I don't know. I don't know. I've been trying to figure that one out. I don't know what's happened in Wisconsin. That Maybe if I lived there, I could figure it out. But, you know, when you're in a state, um, every state has its own um, makeup. And uh, people that go into a state and try to win elections that aren't from that state usually have to learn about that state because, uh, you know, people um, react differently for different reasons. And uh, so if you're not from Wisconsin, I can't answer that question, but I, maybe somebody from Wisconsin could. You know, it's been very interesting to me. We haven't had much of a chance to talk about this uh, presidential election. 
And it's going to get hot and heavy again now with the conventions just yeah, a short yeah. time away. I kind of dread it, really. Yeah. Well, why do, at convention time, why does it get so nasty? That seems like that's the time. I mean, not that it hasn't already been uh, Yeah, it's nasty. already been. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was on the, the um, Democratic National Committee for 20 years, and I attended all those conventions. And I was on the executive committee for almost that long. And um, it, it is because of the hype with the convention, I think. It, it just gets everything hyped. Do you think uh, this will be a, a big push for Romney? Uh, he's got his vice president in place. I imagine he'll have some big speakers there. I recently read that former president, neither one of the Bushes is going to attend no, that. No, that's true. That's, that's interesting. I, yeah, well, for good reason. Well, I think good reason for the second Bush, but I don't know that the first Bush people have a problem with. Do you think they still do? Yeah. You mm -hmm. do? Well, I mean, uh, not as much as uh, George W., but I still... I think there's still, um, I, they remember his presidency in the Iran-Contra situation. Uh, all of that is a sore point. Uh, obviously, Clinton will be at mm -hmm. the Democratic convention, so yeah. they've, they've, they're okay there. Uh, Republican convention, do you, who do you see being the m big speaker there? What do you think the big news will be? Sarah Palin, uh, maybe Newt Gingrich, maybe uh, McCain? Who do you think will get the big pop out of that? Well, I don't think it's going to be Palin because she um, she hasn't even been, you know, verified that she's going to be there. Um, and the fact that she stepped on his announcement, you know, she had her big to-do when he was announcing he was uh, running for president and uh, she grabbed the headlines from him, which politicians don't like that. No. <laughs> McCain is yesterday's news. I don't think uh, I don't think McCain is going to be a big uh, thing. Um, I kind of wish they'd have Ann Coulter. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she's there. I don't. I don't think. Oh, she'll, she'll, be, she'll there. be there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. She'll be there. She'll be there. <laughs> um, it, it's interesting <laughs> to me what you said that really <laughs> that we have two former presidents who are Republican mm -hmm. who are not invited for right. a reason. Um, I, I who is I, I can't, I was trying to think who's going to come to that convention, that's going to really knock it out of the maybe Giuliani. He seems to be a pretty prolific speaker. Yeah, he is. Um, you know, I wonder what's happened to Pat Buchanan because I don't see him anywhere. I wonder uh, what's going on there because I don't know if he's ill or what. But uh, he's normally on the talk shows. He's not on there anymore. He was a really good speaker at. Um, uh, what convention was it? Must have been. Um, I think it was the one that um, uh, uh, forty-one was uh, running. I think it was. Yeah. I think it was ninety-two when he ran. Or ninety-two Clinton. when he was running. Yeah, yeah. That it was. It was ninety-two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll all be forgiven from Gingrich and maybe even more. Uh, um, oh, his name just left my head. San Santorum. Santorum. Well, Santorum. I think it's hard to forgive. Yeah, well, it's how bad they want to spot on the in the cabinet or wherever. You know, a lot of that depends on that. Where does Ron Paul go from here? Well, boy, I don't know. He's he's made some rumblings that uh, could be a third party candidate. Is that right? I've I've heard I've a little bit. I I didn't know that. If he does, I'm I'm pretty sure Romney will not be a happy man. No, he certainly wouldn't. Oh, I wouldn't think so. No, any time you have a third party, it's dangerous. Yeah, it's it's very interesting, and I think it's going to shape up uh, quite a bit over here in, in the next few weeks and months to come. I wanted to touch on a few other things. There's a paper in or uh, an article in Sunday's paper, and I pulled the statistics out of this about our county jail here in Marion. 11.1 percent of offenders uh, are blocked from being in the county jail because it's, uh, f were booked because of them being overcrowded. 24.9.7% are turned away, 63.93%, that's 530 people, do not even show up because they know they'll be turned away. I think that's kind of a prolific article. I guess so. What, 
how do we fix, do you have any idea how we fix a problem like that with the county jail? Well, I think they'd have to put them somewhere. Yeah. Apparently they just turn them away at this point. 530 get or don't show up or are turned away. And they don't show up and they <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't know about that one. They've got, got nowhere to put them. I think it's very strange <laughs> that, right. that this type of thing's going it on. Sounds here. like a problem to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and it brings me back to the now we have the on July twenty third. City Council has voted that there is going to be a tax uh, amendment on mm-hmm. the uh, ballot. Point two five percent, I believe, is what it is. Uh, have you had a chance to think about that? How you feel about that at this point? Well, I know they need the money. Um, it's going to be very hard uh, in a an area that's uh, having difficulty. Um, we'll have to see what happens there, you know. But they're they're between a rock and a hard place, I'm sure. Yeah, it's a rough time. Mm-hmm. Rough time, but hopefully yeah. we've we've been through rough times before. Well, we have. That's right. Yeah. And I think we'll pull through. Yes, I think we will. <laughs> I, uh, we, we have to have hope. <laughs> Onward have and hope. upward. <laughs> Onward and upward. That's <laughs> right. exactly right. Uh, the, the Olympics came to an end. Yes, yeah, well, tonight. Yeah, yeah. Tonight. U.S. did very well. Yes, we did. Mark Phelps becomes the all-time record holder for wow. medals. Yeah, that was really something. What were your thoughts on this year's Olympics? Oh, I thought they were terrific. Uh, I I really enjoyed it, um, probably more than I usually do, because I don't always watch a lot. But um, I really enjoyed, uh, I think the patriotism is tremendous with those participants and how they feel about their country. I think it's terrific. It makes us all feel good. It does, and there is something about the Olympics that is not a football game, that is not a baseball game. Yeah. There's some mystique there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I love seeing the backstories. Yes, I love to like that poor guy that was shot. Oh. And then he ran that race, and he couldn't even walk when he after. Uh, yeah, all of those stories. That's what makes it interesting are the backgrounds on the people that are participating. Well, and, and the, the people, I mean, I watched a race, and the, the girl crosses the line, and she broke a record, and she just collapses from exhaustion. Mm-hmm. That, that people push themselves oh, yeah. to that level. Yeah, and that poor girl that tripped and fell again. Oh. I felt so bad for her because, you know, it wasn't her fault. And, um, you know, all that training for four years and then you fall yeah and i always wonder where do you go I yeah because th- this has been your life mm-hmm. for four years right it all boils down to 10 minutes mm-hmm. where do you go uh i don't know if i've ever mentioned this but um the mint uh has there's a uh, training place for the olympics in colorado did i ever mention no, that to I've you heard that. uh yeah there's a training uh uh building uh, in Colorado that uh, has been built uh, from um, money from the Mint, really. Uh, So it's uh, it's rather interesting. I I was not there. I was close by, but I wasn't in it. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I I really uh, don't know a lot that they train with in there, but um, I don't think anybody knows about it. You know, it's never mentioned. You know, it's weird how certain things get uh, pushed under the rug. You know, it is. Um, yeah, and then other things are just talked about over and over. <laughs> repeatedly, <laughs> repeatedly, <laughs> repeatedly, and right. they never go away. They're, yeah. they're there forever. I tell you what, we're going to take a short commercial break. We're going to come back, and I know a lot of people in town, we're going to get away from politics for a second. We're going to talk about a very interesting story in town and also be joined by Chris Philpot. Her horse, Willow, uh, could possibly be removed from her home depending on what happens with city council and uh, safety service director here in town. We'll be right back after this. Trello Romine's long-awaited autobiography, My Not-So-Ordinary Life, is now available. Trella Hemerly Romine is a Marian native who lives near Caledonia, Ohio at Teradice, her home along the Whetstone River for the past 65 years. She is a 1933 graduate of Harding High School and former owner of Hemerly's Flowers. She also has played an integral role at the Marion County Historical Society. 
Copies of my Not So Ordinary Life are available in hardbound and softbound editions at Heritage Hall, located at 169 East Church Street, and at Hemmerley's Flowers, located at 615 East Center Street, both in Marion. You can also order books online at www.paradisebooks.com. My Not So Ordinary Life the autobiography of Trella Romine. It's can't miss. Are you looking for affordable office space in Marion? The professional building located at 685 Delaware Avenue is the place for you. For more information, call 740-383-6803. Office space is now available. Again, telephone number 740 740- Three eight three six eight zero three. Whether you are buying a home, selling a home, or just want to know more about real estate, call Curry Klingel, real estate professional. He will assist you with all of your real estate needs. Curry is located at 1794 Marion Waldo Road in Marion. Telephone number 740-361. 6996. Curry is also on the net at www.inahurrycallcurry.com. In a hurry, call Curry today. Thank you on Scott Spears now, joined by 40th Treasurer of the United States, Mary Ellen Withrow, and now joined by Chris Philpot, who has a very interesting story to tell uh, regarding her horse, Willow, which possibly you might have heard of. Chris, thank you so much for being on the show. And thank you for having me. Uh, I only know what I've read in the paper and, and what I've heard. Uh, tell us from beginning to end what has happened here with your horse, Willow. Okay, back in 07, I was able to adopt this horse, but I had to have somewhere to keep her. So I went to the city law director's office, and I talked to them up there. They came back to me and said there are no laws in the city of Marion against having a horse in town, but there are some guidelines. So I had to go to zoning, I had to go to the health department, I got all the guidelines, I got everything done up to par to where it's supposed to be. Then I brought her in on February 16th of 07. Everything's in great, dandy, fine, until they came up and started passing the new um, city ordinance that there's no farm animals in the city limits. I then got a permit in 11, that ran through till the end of this past January. Then me and my lawyer went to Tom Robbins and the law director and we had a conversation. They're pretty much telling me I can't keep her. So therefore, in return, I have filed a lawsuit because Tom Robbins has put in that my animal is running at large, which we know she has never gotten loose, ever, and that she's an offensive animal. And now he's trying to tell me that I got to keep her on 211 Waterloo. Well, I have five properties that are all conjoined and fenced in together. The city of Marion zoning even gave me a variance on a six foot high fence to put on the corner of Waterloo and Bennett Street. I did it exactly the way they told me to do it and I keep it the way they tell me to. Now, when they gave you this one year extension after they had passed the ordinance, did they tell you what was going to happen at the end of that one year? No. Tom Robbins told me that I could reapply for the permit, which I did, and he denied it. Now, what was the permit for? It was for my horse, which is a Tennessee walking mare. Okay, she's 13 years old now. And it was it set on it a one-time permit, which at that time I had no idea, and I did call him on it. And I guess I was supposed to get rid of her in that time. And I told him then, no, I'm not going to. Now, for people who don't understand, why is this so important to you that you keep this horse? And I understand it, it's like a pet. I understand that. She was my rescue. Yeah. Oh, she rescued you? I rescued her. Oh, you her. rescued her. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. The guy that had her was going to send her down to the Sugar Creek Auction. Sugar Creek Auction is known for selling their horses for meat market. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So is there any compromise we can come to between you and the city that's not going to result in loss? I mean, I think we all want to settle this amicably. Is there anything that w- you, 
meet them halfway, they'd meet you halfway? All I wanted was her grandfathered in. That's all I asked for. City Council said, no, nothing is getting grandfathered in. And then there's, there's still chickens running around town. I've seen them. Now, why do you think they won't grandfather it in? Have they grandfathered other people in? Now, that I do not know. Okay. I do not know and if not they did or not. And not sure why they wouldn't grandfather you I in. know there were two other people that had horses from what Tom Robbins told me. He said they had the one in Virginia removed. Either they removed it or she did. I'm not sure which. Because she was facing the same thing I am now. 30 days in jail with $250 fine and forceful removal of my horse. Um, can they come and forcefully remove it any time? I mean, could that happen? Um, as far as my lawyer says right now, no, because this is all up in the legal system. What exactly has been filed in the legal system? So far, that has been filed as two misdemeanors. One, for animals running at large, which she's never ran at large. What they're telling me is that she's not allowed to be in my adjoined lots that I own. Those were bought for her and my dogs, and, and they're going to run in it. It's theirs. And the other one is offensive animal. Now, I'm not exactly sure what he's going on on that, but you can ask anybody in my neighborhood, they don't even smell her. Well, the interesting thing is I've seen people from your neighborhood have put up signs and have said, you know, they want her to stay. Correct. Um, has, has anybody approached you and said, we don't want this here anymore? No, no one has never, ever told me that she's not welcome there. Everybody comes by and visits her. They bring their kids, grandkids, they feed her. <laughs> I mean, she's like the neighborhood pet. Mm -hmm. Have you ever asked the city why they passed this ordinance? That I never came out and actually asked them, but I believe it started with a big complaint of chickens on Barnhart Street. I think it was Barnhart Street. Okay, and it just ended up encompassing horses yeah. and other things along the way. Right. I never knew nothing a about it until I was told about it, and that's when I went to the first city council meeting. When I know you've met with, with uh, some of these people. Uh, is there anything, are, are they offering any options, any compromises, any let's try to work this out, anything? The only thing um, I was told was if you get rid of her, or reduce your fine to $50. Yeah. Uh, any ch in the end, if you lose the case, you essentially will have to get rid of her, won't you? Most likely, but I'm going to fight it. Right. Um, w I think Mary Ellen had asked during the break, isn't there a place that she could be boarded? Mm -hmm. As far as being close for me, no. Yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, I would have went to the fairgrounds. And evidently, Tom Robbins and the law director did not know at that time, which was this past February, that the fairgrounds no longer boarded horses because they were saying about boarding it out there. What if some place, I don't know what the rules on this are, but what if there was some place you could board them in the city? They're not going to take care of her the way I do. She loves it where she's at. No, she's staying right where she's at. I put way too much money out on this. I started out with a small project. It got into a bigger project. Right. Well, I understand that. But uh, it, it could be a rough road, I think, in the end. I, I'm going to stand up for my rights. Now, you had told me this was a constitutional thing. Correct. Now, why is that? I'm not exactly sure on all of it. All I know is my property was conforming use, and it's still the conforming use of what it was before the laws went into effect. And do we know what the laws are for grandfathering something over? I don't know all of the steps. I really don't. I, I work with my lawyers on that, and they haven't told me yet. Mm. Mary Ellen, what do you make of a case like this? Well, I think it's very difficult. Uh, uh, I would think there would be some place close by, though, not in Marion, but outside of the edges of Marion where somebody uh, could keep a horse uh, that she could have it close by. Um, and I can understand when you've got a... A pet like that, there, you know, you really become quite close to them. I had a horse once. <laughs> 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 she, she, she was. Uh, qu <laughs> I have to tell you, she knew that I knew nothing about riding. Okay, so I get on her. She'd go over and stand by the barn in the shade. She wouldn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> 
she knew what was going on. Yeah, she knew how to I, handle things, yeah. You know, Mary Ellen, don't you feel, because I kind of do in some ways, that the best kind of government is a government that is willing to work with the people mm -hmm. and compromise. Mm -hmm. I, this is a tough one because I think they did pass the law, so I can understand where they're coming from. But I guess I don't understand why it's ballooned into such a big deal. I mean, uh, they are prevented right now, from what I understand, from removing the horse Correct. because of the lawsuits. Who, who is it hurting, I guess? I mean, what is it hurting that it's number one on the agenda now? Because I, it's a big deal, I think. It's become a big they deal. They made it a big deal. I'm just defending myself. When did, when, at what point did you file the lawsuit when you said, I'm not going to be pushed any further than this? What were they going to do? They, I don't know all what they were going to do. All I know is they were trying to press these charges on me. I went to my lawyer, and he's like, no. He went in and put an innocent plea on me, and I do go to a pretrial tomorrow. Okay. And how do you feel that's going to go? What do, you, what do you foresee happening? I'm not sure, but um, I'm not sure what they're going to do, but I'm going to keep going forward. I'm not going to stop. Yeah. You t they told me I could have her. I went through all the expense and everything of getting her and getting her back up in the shape that she should be in instead of all covered in poop and thin and all that. No. Um, at the end of the day, if the ruling does not come out the way you want it to, isn't there something that can be done? I mean, you're not, would, at that point, would you send her uh, to a place like Sugar Creek, or would you find a place like I would her? never, ever send any animal to Sugar Creek, okay. ever. So eventually, I mean, so the horse is going to be fine in the end, no matter what happens. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, she's going to she's gonna mm -hmm. be, I don't have a plan. I'm going to cross that bridge when I get to it. Right. So, but if you were explaining this to somebody, what would be your main complaint? What really bothers you the most about this? That I was told I could have something and it'd be hunky-dory for three years, and then city council just comes along and passes a law that says I can't have her. I don't, I don't see where it's right that people can do that. Would it be right if I told her she could have a baby, she has it, and for three or four years, she cares for this child, and then someone comes in and rips it out from you. That, uh, that's how I feel. I'm curious. Um, was there different people on the council than when the, when it was before when they voted on it? That's probably what's happened. It's different people. Is is there different uh, council members? There's quite a few of them are the same, I believe. Are they? Because I don't know. I just got back from. I haven't been keeping else. up with them. <laughs> you know, for the three years I've yeah. just been living my life happy, and now yeah. I'm not trying to yeah. uproot my whole castle. Yeah. Well, I can certainly understand that. I think it might be a good idea to see who 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 are, who is city councils opposing this, and what is their reason mm -hmm. for opposing this? Mm -hmm. Because I, I hopefully they have some kind of valid reason. Because obviously I think you have a valid reason for wanting it to stay. So I imagine they have one for wanting it to go. Well, like I said, I still know there's chickens running around. I've seen them with my own eyes. They're not, why aren't they on them? Uh, ferrets are illegal in the city of Marion. How many children, kids, even adults, have these as pets? They're illegal in Marion. They just became illegal. I didn't know that. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. I don't but have one. But <laughs> and swine is illegal. <laughs> but you are allowed to have Vietnamese pot belly pigs. Oh, really? As long yeah. as you have a permit, <laughs> two per parcel. Yeah. Now, I own six parcels, so does that mean I can have 12? <laughs> you know what I mean? I, well, it's, you know, it's, I don't know. It's in a, I, I do believe that the law should be the same for everybody. So if these other mm -hmm. things are outlawed, well, then they should have to go also. But why should we have to get rid of them if we already have them? Right. I, I don't know. I think, you know, that I, comes down to how the law reads and who gets grandfathered over. That, that's too complicated <laughs> for me. If I'm not mistaken, it's still on the law books that you cannot ride a horse down Main Street on Sunday because the guy that used to clean the streets don't work Sunday. No. Oh. I believe that law is still on the books. But can you ride the horse on Tuesday down yeah. Main Street? <laughs> yeah, I rode her in town. I oh, don't you go very far. I go to Chase Bank because that's my bank. It's about a mile from my house and a mile back. She does great. And nobody stops you. Nobody. They so stop you can ride better. a horse on the street in Marion, but you can't keep one at your house. Correct. And that's the law. 
That's what they told me. Well, that's interesting. You know, I can ride her in the parks and stuff. I have to stay so far away from the shelters and stuff. And me out of common courtesy, I'm not going to ride her when it's muddy out because I know what, how bad divots can be. Well, you know, the interesting thing is is that they, they had filed a complaint that, that she was running loose. Yes. But you say no. No, she's never gotten out. Do you think that could be part of the issue that city council, because obviously they weren't there. The complaint there. was done by Tom Robbins. Oh, he made it himself. Yeah, and it's through the health department. So nobody had complained to him, and then he reported it. He reported it. He came down and took pictures of my horse at my 832 Bennett address, which sits right behind the barns. Hmm. That's well, what he's trying to get me for as far as animals running on, out on large and also on my other lot, which is adjoined to mine, 812 Bennett Street. It's an interesting case, and I think, uh, I don't know. You know, it's hard for people to lose their animals. I understand that, but uh, I don't know. I hope. I just hope there's a nice, cleanly result in this all. I hope the city and you can come together mm -hmm. and something can be done. And well, I'm pretty steadfast on what I say. She ain't going nowhere. So even if there was a place in Marion to board her, you wouldn't accept that? Because she's not going to be, she's not going to have the 24-7 monitoring that I can give her. Who's going to, when we had this bad storm back in, what was it, June 29th? Who was the one out in the stall with her to make sure that she was going to be fine? Me. Do you think anybody else would do that? No. She's more, better kept where she's at than she is out in the country on some farm even running the pastures. I used to race harness horses. I know they do not need to be in a pasture all the time. They can eat hay and grain and get their vitamins and salt and stuff like that they need. I get, I get the feeling for the traditional term that we say pet, that this is more than a pet. This is my kid. This is my child you're talking about, just like my dogs. They're my kids. Mm -hmm. And n uh, nobody's going to bring harm to my children. Otherwise, my animals, nobody. I will step in the middle. I, and how long have you had this horse? These six years come February 16th. Six years. I, it's an interesting case, and it was it was great to get a first-hand perspective on it. Mary Ellen, anything to add to that? No, I have nothing to add. <laughs> that's, that's a tough one. That's a tough one when you sit there and uh, think about it. I do want you, though, again, Mary Ellen, to give me the um, uh, uh, hours, because a lot of people have asked me about this, for your uh, room oh, yes. at Rimrose. Yeah, and, and I got the date. Uh, the last time I didn't know the exact date, it's, uh, it's uh, the 19th, which is a week, uh, uh, it's a week from tomorrow, which is um, going to be different <laughs> on the news, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, but August I, 19th. <laughs> yeah, August 19th August from 19th. 2 to 4. Yeah, two to four. And, um, yeah, it's... Um, It'll it'll be fun to see everybody again, yeah. After a lot of yeah. people have asked me about that. And it's out at Primrose. That's behind the YMCA. You just take the street, go around. It's on Wellness Drive. A lot of great items. I've been in that room from uh, a great lady who had a great career, who has a great career, uh, Mary Ellen Withrow. Going to end this episode with one interesting fact, though. Uh, pulled this out of the paper today also. 1991, since 1991, did you know the Amish population has almost doubled? in the United States. Is that right? 1991, hmm. there w were 179 Amish settlements, and in 2012, there are 456. Right. Over, I wonder what the right. cause for that is. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I was uh, to an Amish home not long ago and, and uh, had lunch, and um, it's, I, was, I was wondering uh, why they don't use electricity. Uh, what's the reasoning? Is it in their religion? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know much about the Amish, to be honest with you. It'd be interesting to talk with somebody mm -hmm. who, who followed that doctrine. Mm -hmm. I'm, th I'm just surprised that in the high-tech world we live in now, mm -hmm. where everything is so quick, that the population of Amish has doubled in the last mm -hmm. 20 years. I'm surprised, too. They certainly know how to build things. That they uh, And they know, mm -hmm. how they know how to cook. Yes. They do a lot yes. of things very well. Yeah. Very interesting fact. We'll be back with much more Scott Spears now on our next episode. Hope you enjoyed it. We thank Mary Ellen Withrow and Chris Philpott. Have a good day.